Well, good morning, uh, good afternoon, or good evening to everybody. Whatever time it is that you are watching this video, welcome to our lecture video for today. And uh, for today's module, the following will be our objectives. At the end of this module, you are expected to do the following. First, describe the different forms of ancient or folk literature and give examples of it. Explain what are the different literary forms during the Spanish period and give examples of it. Discuss the different elements of poetry, define and give, uh, give examples of each of the different figures of speech commonly used in poetry and define and give examples of the different elements of the short story. So for our, uh, for our lecture video today, um, we will take up or discuss the outline of literary forms based on Philippine historical period. So here we are going to trace the development of Philippine literature, how it has changed, how it has uh, evolved through the different periods in our history. Let's start with our ancient literature or folk literature. Here we will talk about our literature, most of uh, which are oral traditions that we already had long before the coming of the Spaniards. First, we have the myth or myths, uh, which were traditional stories in prose concerning details of gods and demigods and the creation of the world and its inhabitants. Examples of these are creation myths, such as the Visayan creation myth, Bagobo creation story, and Tungkong Langit and Aluncina. I understand that letter C Tung Kung Langit and the Luncina is one of the stories assigned for you to um, read, summarize, and analyze. So these uh, myths, as you can see in the examples, are, exam are, are stories which uh, aim or purport to give us an explanation as to how the world started. If you are familiar with the story, uh, how Bathala molded the first man and woman um, out of clay and how he breathed life into it, that is uh, an example of a myth. No? How Bathala created the world, no? that is an example of a creation myth. Uh, also the story about um, Malakas and Maganda how Malakas came out of a, uh, of a bamboo, which uh, split into two, and uh, followed by Maganda, who also came out of a, of a bamboo. So yan, mga examples yan ng mga myth. We already had these stories, these myths, long before the coming of the Spaniards. Meron na tayong mga kwentong ganyan. We also had heroic, uh, heroic narratives or epics. Uh, these, of course, were folk epics or folk stories which narrate the adventures of tribal heroes. And usually these heroes embody in themselves the ideals and values of the group, meaning they possess the uh, characteristics considered ideal by the community from which these stories came from. Examples of these Heroic narratives or epics are the following, Lamang, Olalim, Ibalon, and also Indarapatra and Sulaiman. Um, I think Lamang is the most popular, popular among all of these stories. Um, I hope you are already familiar with this, with the story of Lamang. I hope that you have already read at least one version of it, no? at least the summary. I understand that this is also one of the stories assigned for you to 
read, summarize, and analyze. Sana nabasa na ninyo so that you will at least have an idea of how these heroic narratives or epics go. Then we have a theological legends. Legends which explain how things came to be or how, why things are as they are. Examples of these are the legend of Mayan volcano, the legend of the Tagalogs, or Gadang. Mm. Some of these uh, theological legends are similar to uh, myths, because some of these stories also tell us how certain things started, like Mayan volcano, no? or Alamat ng Bulkang Mayon. It tells us how the people of those times, ancient times, believed the uh, Mayan volcano started, how it began, how it came to be. Bakit nagkaroon ng Mayan volcano? Their answer is, ang alamat ng Mayan volcano or the legend of Mayan volcano. The legend of the Tagalogs, Gadang, uh, the legend of the uh, pineapple, are you familiar with that story? Ang alamat ng pinya. Bakit daw maraming mata ang pinya? Our ancestors, our forefathers, had a, uh, an explanation for this. No? Mm, through a story, yun yung alamat ng pinya. Then, aside from those already mentioned, we also, we also have folk tales. These uh, prose narratives um, came in several forms, the first of which were animal tales or stories, folk tales, using animals as characters. Ang mga tauhan sa kwento ay mga hayop. The best example, and probably the most popular, is the monkey and the turtle. Even among children, this story is very popular. They can tell and retell and retell the story again and again and again. This uh, is an example of a folk tale. I hope everybody is familiar with this story, no? How the turtle found a banana floating in the river and how uh, the monkey helped the turtle get the banana how they planted it how they divided no how they divided the plant how they planted it and who finally got the got the fruits i hope everybody is familiar with this story i think everybody is fami familiar with the story that is uh, a very good example of an animal tale which is a kind type or form of a folk tale. Then we also have the story about the cow and the carabao. Uh, how they exchanged uh, hides or skin. Okay. Uh, we also have folk speech, which is um, a form of folk tales. Or I mean this this. This falls under under folk tales, no? We have le letter B here because our letter A, the first one, are animal tales. So under folk speech, we have riddles, mga buktong. The riddles usually come in the descript come in the form of descriptions of objects in terms intended to suggest. Something entirely different. So the object of this game, the object of riddles is for the hearer or for the listener to guess what is being actually described. Uhulaan kung ano yung describe. Yan ang mga bugtong. Example of this, an example of this is Nidalagan si Juan Napikas ang dalan. Tumakbo daw si Juan, nahati ang daan. Actually, wala namang Juan, wala namang daan na nahati. Actually, the riddle, is, the riddle is describing something else. And the answer, of course, here is zipper. I know that you uh, know 
a lot of riddles, no? Maraming mga bugtong tayong alam. Riddles like, um, hindi hayop, hindi tao, nagbabago-bago ng hugis, or something like that, no? Uh, and then we answer it with moon or buwan, dahil nagbabago-bago yung kanyang shape. So we are very familiar with this uh, kind of fox speech. Mga bugtong. Then we have proverbs, which is also very familiar to us. This is another kind of uh, fox speech. These are short, popular sayings that express effectively some commonplace truth. There is always a truth in the proverb or useful thought. Our example is very common among, among us. Ang hindi daw lumingon sa pinanggalingan, hindi makararating sa paroroonan. So, this is a very uh, simple statement, but it carries with it deep truth or insight about how we Filipinos believe regarding um, gratefulness or pagtanaw ng utang ng loob to those people who have helped us along the way. Actually, what is being described here is not somebody who is simply walking and looking back. No? This, uh, this refers to mm, life itself. If we do not appreciate the efforts of those who have helped us before, if we uh, are not grateful to those who have done things for us, then we will never achieve our goals in life. Ang tinutukoy lang naman dito ay yung pagtanaw ng utang na loob sa mga taong nakatulong sa atin. So that truth is captured in a very simple statement uh, called a proverb. Ito nga yung kanyang example. So there, the proverb. Maraming mga mga proverbs, proverbs, mga kasabihan ng mga Pilipino. No? Mm. Other examples are ang anak daw ay natitiis ang magulang pero walang magulang na nakatitiis nakapagtitiis sa anak I cannot uh, remember the exact words but you know what I mean no? mga kasabihan natin um, ang magnanakaw daw ay galit sa kapwa magnanakaw See, these are very simple statements but they capture uh, deep truths in life that we Filipinos uh, believe in. See, those are examples of proverbs. Okay, then we have folk songs. Verses set into music by the members of a community. Folk songs. Uh, actually, they, they usually start as verses. Short points, no? Short points. Examples are Malang Biday, Dandan Soy. Um, other examples we can cite here, yung medyo familiar sa atin, are Bahay Kobo. No? Bahay Kobo. Ah, Bahay. Bahay Kobo is an example of a folk song. Leron Leron Sinta is also an example of a folk song. This uh, simple Mm, tunes, these simple songs uh, capture the, usually no, they usually capture the daily experiences of the people in the community no? their, their um, struggles their victories things that uh, make them happy things that make them sad they sing about the work they do Kaya mayroon tayong magtanim ay di biro, no? Gusto ko sanang kantahin sa inyo itong ibang mga folk songs. Kaya lang, paos talaga ang boses ko ngayon. Some other time, maybe. Kaya lang, magbabayad kayo. <laughs> Balik kayo. <laughs> so, those are examples of folk songs. I hope you are following me in your um, 
in your module, no? Ba tayo nakarating ng letter C or number 3? Dapat yung siguro number 3. Kasi yung number 1 ay riddles. Number 2 is proverbs. Then we have number 3 dapat folk songs. So it should be number 3. Anyway, basta siyang pang tatlo under folk speech, no? Folk speech. So itong tatlong ito, riddles, proverbs, folk songs, are forms of folk speech. So, uh, there you are. Uh, those are the different uh, types or forms of folk literature uh, during the ancient times, no? And that's why we call this the, our ancient literature. We already had them uh, long before the coming of the Spaniards. So let us proceed. Uh, let's talk about the Philippine literature during the Spanish period. So yun yung literature natin, yung mga nabanggit ng mga myths, um, folk, folk speech or folk tales, epics, we had them already before the coming of the Spaniards. And ang dumating naman ng mga Kastila, anong nangyari sa ating panitikan? What happened to our, to our literature when the Spaniards came to our shores and colonized us? So let's talk about the first one, poetry. Mm. Let's talk about the Ladino poems first. Um, Ladinos, as you can see in your modules, were natives, yung mga katutubong Pilipino. Um, they were Tagalog versifiers. A versifier is somebody who writes poems. No. A versifier is a poet. He writes poems. And when we uh, speak of Ladinos, we are speaking about the first uh, Filipino poets or first Filipino versifiers whose works were printed. They were both literate in Spanish and the vernacular. Meaning they could mm, speak Spanish uh, well fluently. They could write and speak the language, no, and their own native language. Pagaling ng Tagalog, Spanish and Tagalog. Pagaling ng alimbawa ibang probinsya like Pampanga, a Pampanga, Spanish and Kapampangan. So they were bilinguals at the very least, no? Usually the start is, the, the, not the start, but usually the style is, uh, in, in uh, the, their style in writing their verses, their poems, were in alternating Tagalog or whatever vernacular they are speaking and Spanish lines, no? Palitan, alternating. Let us look at this example from Fernando Bagong Banta. Salamat ng walang hangga. And usually it's a 12 stanza poem, no? In alternating Tagalog and Spanish lines. Or Spanish and vernacular. Here's an example. Salamat ng walang hangga. Gracias si din. Simpiternas sa nagpasilang ng tala al ki ito sa Lerla Estrella makapagpanao ng dilim kedges tiere las tinyelyas sa lahat na bayan natin de todo esta nuestra tierra si alternating Tagalog and Spanish You can read this poem, uh, whatever like, uh, oh, whatever like, whatever way you like. You can read the Tagalog lines first, then go back to the Spanish lines afterwards. So, babasahin mo muna lahat. Salamat ng walang hangga sa nagpasilang ng tala. 
makapagpanaw ng dilim sa lahat na bayan natin. And then you go back to the first line, then read all the Spanish lines in turn. Pwede yung ganon. Whatever you like, whatever you prefer. So this is an example of a Ladino poem. No? Usually they are poems uh, composed or made up of uh, 12 stanzas. And as you can see, the lines come in alternating Spanish and uh, vernacular. It may be Tagalog and then Spanish. It may be Kapampangan and then Spanish. Uh, whatever. Then aside from the Ladino poems, remember we're talking about literature during the Spanish times uh, and we started with poetry. So the first are Ladino poems. Isa yun sa mga mm, widely uh, written and read types of literature during that time plus the metrical romances. Speaking of metrical romances, we have uh, the first type or kind are the corridos. The, uh, they were widely read during the Spanish period and they filled, they satisfied the people's need for entertainment no? as well as for edifying reading matter in their leisure moments. Na entertain na, natututo pa sila. Especially with regards to morals. No? These are extended verse narratives based on tales brought into the country from Europe. So these stories were not originally written in the Philippines. They came from Europe, brought here by the Spaniards. But they modified those stories. They changed uh, certain elements of the story and even extended these stories um, to, uh, to suit the kind of uh, reader or listeners that they have. No? And uh, to make them consistent with the experiences of the people here in the Philippines during that time. But the stories originated from, from Europe. They are not original stories written here, either by the Spaniards or by Filipinos. These corridors, which are forms of metrical romances, dealt mostly with courtly love and the chivalric adventures of such heroes as Charlemagne and his peers and El Cid but they are not literal translations of the original works. Charlemagne, oh, Charlemagne is an epic coming from France. El Cid is an epic coming from Spain. So these stories were patterned after these stories. Charlemagne and El Cid. Nung mangkarating dito, binago nila ng konti, but patterned after Charlemagne and El Cid and other uh, stories from Europe. They were not literal translations of the original works, uh, but uh, uh, they exact imitation. Well, we can call them imitation because they are not original, but certain elements were already altered or changed. May mga binago na. The structure is octosyllabic quatrains, and most are of unknown authorship. Now, ito, very familiar itong example sa atin. Ang ibong adarna. The structure is octosyllabic. Octo. Ilan yon? Octopus. Ilan yung kanyang hmm, tentacles? Ten? Tentacles? Ka na. <laughs> Hindi. Walo lang. Kaya nga, octopus. Oct or octo means eight. So, pag sinabing octosyllabic, what rains? These are poems made up of what rains? What apat? So four lines in a stanza, and each line is composed of how many syllables? Tamang hula nyo. 
walo. So, eight syllables per line and four lines per stanza. So, example nga itong, ang ibong adarna. Ayan. O birhing kaibig-ibig, ina naming nasa langit, liwanagan niya ring isip nang tayo'y di malihis. Ganito ang napagsapit ng haring kaibig-ibig nang siya ay managinip isang gabing naiidlip. Di umanoy si Don Juan bunson, bunson niyang minamahal ay nililo at pinatay ng dalawang tampalasan. May isang ibong maganda ang pangalan ay Adarma pag narinig mong kumanta sa sakit ay giginhawa. Let's go back. Diba sabi natin, four lines, quatrains eh. So yan, meron tayong four lines. We have four lines uh, in every stanza. Yan, quatrain yan. If you're going to count the number of syllables, each line is made up of eight syllables. O, bir, hing, ka, i, big, i, big. That's eight. In na, naming, nasa, langit. If you're going to count each of the lines, if you're going to count all the lines one by one, <coughs> sorry, you will find out that each line has eight syllables. Octo, octosyllabic. So this uh, is the form usually um, <coughs> corridors are, uh, are seen uh, octosyllabic quatrains. I don't know if you have already um, read Ibong Adarna or if you are familiar with the story. I was thinking of including it in one of the stories you're going to uh, research, summarize, and analyze, but it's, it's a very, very long uh, story. So, hindi na lang natin isinama. Oh, anyway, this is an example of a corridor. Octosyllabi quatrains. Then we have the awit, similar to corridors, uh, awits were also widely read during the Spanish period as entertaining, edifying reading matter in their leisure time. Okay, so these awits were fabrications of the writer's imagination. The characters and the setting may be European, the structure is rendered in dodecasyllabic quatrains, refers to chanting. So, corridors and awits are similar. Um, the only difference is that awits were, were originally uh, written here. They were not, uh, they were not uh, brought here by the Spaniards from, from Europe. These were original stories by, uh, by our writers. Some of them were Filipinos, maybe some of them were Spaniards, but the point is they were already written here. And their form is dodecasyllabic quatrains. So quatrains are lit, four lines in every stanza, but there are how many syllables? Kung yung octosyllabic ay walo ang syllables per line, Ito namang dodecasyllabic quatrains ay 12 lines. So dodecasyllabic quatrains. The best example is Floran Florante at Laura by Francisco Baltazar. Tingnan natin. So how many lines? Four lines. One, two, three, four. So we have four lines here. Tingnan natin yung kanyang number of syllables per line. Ang taong nagawi sa ligay at aliw, mahina ang puso't lubhang maramdamin. Inaakala pa lamang ang hilahil na darat na hindi na matutuhang bakhin. Ang taong magawi sa ligay at aliw, mahina. That's those. The first line has 
uh, 12 syllables, no? The next. Mahina ang kusot lubhang maramdamin. 12 again. Inaakala palamang ang hilahil. 12 again. Nadarat na'y di na matutuhang batin. 12 again. So, four lines per stanza. Um, 12 syllables per line. Dodeca syllabic quatrains. Usually, the awits come, yung mga awit, come in the form of poems with dodeca syllabic quatrains. And again, the difference, the major difference between awit and corridor is that the corridors were stories imported from, from Europe. No, they were brought to our shores by the Spaniards while the Awit were originally uh, written here. Uh, yung mga Pilipino na at mga Espanyol na dito ang gumawa ng mga kwento nito. Okay, let us proceed. Okay, Balthazar's masterpiece, meaning yung Florante at Laura, is more than a romance in verse. He expressed his reaction to the political and social conditions of the time. Speaking through Florante, the poet's symbol for colonized Philippines, he bitterly criticized the injustice, hypocrisy, and intolerance of the regime, the Spanish regime. So Florante at Laura is not just a romantic story. It has uh, what we call uh, political overtones or political undertones. There's, uh, there's a message beneath it. No? And uh, if we know how to read between the lines, we will see that it, that it is uh, not just a romantic story, but also a political commentary from... Francisco Baltazar. The story contains bitter criticism against the injustice, no? yung kawalan ng katarungan, hypocrisy and intolerance of the Spaniards when we were colonized by, by them. No? During the Spanish time, uh, you, cannot, uh, you could not speak directly or write directly against the Spaniards you will be you will be jailed you will be thrown into prison you will be killed you will be executed you will be excommunicated you will be banished you will be thrown into a very far place yan ganun na nangyayari so baltasar hid no tinago niya he hid his criticism beneath or behind his masterpiece florante at laura the message was not immediately felt by the Spanish authorities for they were more attracted to the lyrical verses that were homiletic in nature and to the refreshing narration of the victory of a Christian prince over a Muslim Persian. The um, political undertones of the story um, were not seen by the Spaniards because uh, they were more attracted no? uh, by the ly lyrical verses. The verses were very lyrical, meaning they have, they have very high musical quality. They were beautiful verses, in short. They were homilytic in nature. No? Homily. Ano bang ginagawa ng pare pag nag homily he teaches us lessons. So aside from um, entertainment, the people were also edified. They learned something about, uh, about life, about, about morality. So they missed the political undertones. Yun pala, mayroong ibang ibig sabihin si Florante. I mean si Francisco Baltazar. Okay, uh, let us proceed. So tapos na tayo sa poetry, let's, let's talk about prose. 
Baka nga nagtataka kayo kung bakit may pros, bakit may poetry. What's, what's the difference between the two? Now, if you remember, in our previous discussions, poetry are written in lines, while prose is written continuously. If we can read lines and stanzas in a poem, we can read uh, sentences and paragraphs in prose. In addition to that, the sound, the meaning of words are more mm, aesthetically used, more artistically used in poetry than in prose. This is not to say, of course, that prose that does not have its own merits. Now, maganda ding basahin ang, ang, ang prose. Uh, there are people who prefer poetry to prose. There are people who prefer prose to poetry. It depends again on our personal or individual uh, preferences. So let's proceed. Uh, let's talk about prose. Remember, we're talking about literature during the Spanish period, no? So, tapos na yung ating discussion about poetry, prose tayo. So, let me uh, read this first. The prose works of the Spanish period consisted mostly of didactic pieces and translations of religious writings in foreign languages. The most important piece of didactic literature of this period is Urbana and Felisa, written by Father Modesto de Castro and was published in 1855. So this uh, uh, slide here tells us the major characteristics of prose literature during the Spaniards. Uh, uh, first, most of them were didactic in, in tone, meaning they, they, are, they are there they, are intent, they were intended, intended to teach uh, lesson, particularly with regards to morality, with regards to um, spirituality. No? Um, most of them uh, were translations of religious writings in foreign languages. So at this point, our own Filipino writers were not yet writing uh, prose um, maths. Karamihan sa kanila ay mga versifiers. So the first uh, prose uh, literature that uh, were widely read were translations of religious writings from foreign languages. So as, as before in poetry, they started with foreign sources. They started with foreign sources. Um, itong ang Urbana and Felisa, uh, written by Father Modesto de Castro, ang isang magandang halimbawa. Urbana and Felisa is an exchange of letters between two sisters, si Urbana at saka si uh, Felisa. Urbana is a student in a college in Manila. Uh, Felisa, on the other hand, lives in the province with her parents. So, in the story, uh, Urbana wrote letters to her sister, and in those letters, she taught her things like uh, proper behavior at home, in church, while at parties, while receiving a suitor in her parlor, or at home, and on other occasions. So we can see here that the real purpose is really to teach. Kaya nga siya, didactic uh, in nature, didactic. Its purpose is really to, to teach morals, uh, behavior, manners, uh, values. The, the, the story about Urbana and the Felisa, the two uh, sisters, is just a vehicle uh, to, uh, to preach. Kumbaga, it, it, it's just a front. <laughs> it's just, it's just a, a, a style, no? Para maikwento yung mga, para mai preach yung mga uh, ipinangangaral. Like behavior, a proper behavior, uh, morality, manners, values, things like those. Parang ipinaloob na lang sa kwento. But the real purpose is to teach, no? Yan, didactic uh, literature. Okay, and then aside from, uh, aside from 
poetry, prose. We also had religious dramas, religious dramas during the uh, time of the Spaniards. So karamihan ang umpisa sa, sa prose ay religion, no? Uh, many of our prose literature during the Spaniards uh, were of religious nature, religious type. That is, uh, that is easily understandable if we remember that one of the intentions, one of the purposes why the Spaniards came was to uh, spread uh, Christianity. So most of our prose started as uh, religious pieces. These religious dramas were arranged according to the appearance in the liturgical calendar of the events they celebrate. So ang sinusunod, no? the, the, the sequence or order of the religious dramas follow the liturgical calendar um, by the Catholic Church. Tumutugma siya doon sa mga events or celebrations of the, of the church. The first one of these uh, religious dramas is the Panuluyan. Panuluyan. Uh, literally seeking entrance, it is held on the eve of Christmas. Eve of Christmas. Kung ang Christmas natin ay December 25, Ang kanyang eve ay di December 24. No? So sa gabi mayroong panuluyan. Usually we see this in churches. No? Pag nagsisimbang gabi, ah, gabi, <laughs> sorry. Pag nagsisimbang gabi, uh, on the night of the 24th, usually sa mga simbahan, ay mayroong dramatization. No? They dramatize uh, how Joseph and the pregnant uh, Maria, Mary, who are searching for lodging in Bethlehem. So we are very familiar with, with that story. Did, they did not find any home, any inn uh, where, they, where, could, where they could stay because uh, they were already full and they can no longer be accommodated. So um, the uh, husband and wife uh, found the shelter in a manger, and that is where our Lord Jesus Christ uh, was born. See, that's uh, the nativity story. No? Ang tawag dyan, panuluyan. In some other places, panuluyan is also called pananapatan or panawagan. In Bicol, it's Gagharong or pagharong harong. I don't know how to speak Bicolano. Yung mga marunong magbicolano, you will understand this. Gagharong or pangharong harong. Basta sa Tagalog, panuluyan. Yan. So again, this refers to the nativity story. No? How Jesus was born how uh, Joseph and uh, Mary searched for lodgings, could not find one. They uh, found shelter. They took shelter in a manger where Jesus Christ, our Lord, was finally uh, born. Yeah, panuluyan. The panuluyan, to review, is a form of a religious drama. Na isa namang uri ng drama. So, drama are examples, the drama is an example of uh, literature during the Spanish period. No? Pang tatlo yung drama. The first is poetry, the second is prose, then we have the drama. Although the drama can be in, narrat in, in um, prose or in poetry. Nakahiwalay lang ito kasi it's, it's a distinct genre. genre. So, uh, the first one under religious dramas is the panuluya. Then we have the sinakulo. This is also very familiar to us. 
This originated as a simple dramatization of the passion and death of Jesus Christ, usually presented during Monday Thursday and Good Friday, Jueves Santo and Viernes Santo. The players either speak their lines in a slow, deliberate way, in which case it will be called ablada or chanter. Excuse me, parang bibigyan ng boses. Or chant their lines in the manner of passion singing, in which case it will be called a cantada. So pwede niyong mga sinasabi ng mga characters, no? the lines they say during the dramatization. They can speak it slowly and deliberately and they can also chant their lines na para bang nagpapasyon. If they speak their lines, siguro naman nakakita na kayo ng nagsisinakulo, no? Okay. So if they speak their lines, it will be called ablada. And if they chant their lines, yung parang kinakanta na parang nagpapasyon, it will be called a cantada. Kanta. Sing. Abla. Speak. Yeah. That's the sinakulo. Usually ito ay sa Monday Thursday and Good Friday. Webe Santo and uh, Bernie Santo. In some places in our country, this uh, usually culminates, no? Siya ay nagtatapos. It usually, it usually culminates in the actual nailing on the cross of the actor or player playing the role of Jesus Christ, no? So... Sa, papa, sa pampanga yata yun, no? merong mga nagpapapako talaga sa krus. Hindi lang tali, kundi aktual na pina, ipinapako sila sa krus to really recreate the, 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 the story uh, as realistically as possible. But of course, nobody can, can really uh, recreate the story of Jesus Christ. Gusto lang nilang uh, Gawin, no? It's part of their of their panata. It's part of their uh, their vow. Saan pa mayroong mga ganyan aside from Pampanga? In, uh, in other provinces, they, they, they also observe this. Dito sa atin, meron. Uh, kaya lang, simple, walang nagpapapako sa krus. Tali lang. Okay, so that's the sinakolo. Um, Number two na yun, no? Bakit number two na? What's number one? Number one is the panuluyan. Remember, we're talking about religious dramas, no? Religious dramas. So number one is the panuluyan, usually uh, performed on the eve of Christmas. The sinakolo, usually performed on Monday, Thursday, and or Good Friday. Then we have the salubung. An Easter play that dramatizes the meeting of the risen Christ and his mother. In the Bible, our Lord Jesus Christ uh, rose from the dead three days after his death. During, uh, when he rose from the dead, he was met sinalubung, hence the term salubung by his mother, uh, Virgin Mary. So that event is commemorated in this celebration. No? The Salubung. Ito namang Moriones, no? the Moriones, Moriones Festival. San ba ito? Marinduki? Bagay marami namang nag uh, Moriones Festi uh, Festival. This refers to the participants dressed as Roman soldiers. Their identities hidden behind colorful, sometimes grotesque, yung parang nakakatakot ang itsura, no? Para mga monsters. Wooden masks, na muriones. Yeah. 
usually this tells the story uh, between the, uh, the battle between the between Christians and the Muslims. The climax of the celebration is the beheading of the Morions. Pinupugutan sila ng ulo ng mga, uh, mga Christians. So tuwang-tuwa yung mga tao kasi siyempre uh, nananalo yung mga Christians against the Muslims. Sila ang kumbagay bida. Hindi nila alam sa kwento ng mga Muslim, mas malupit yung <laughs> Yung mga Christians naman ang tano. So, siyempre, ganun lang. Kung sino nagkakwento siya ang bida. Okay, so that's the Moriones. Um, so that's the fourth. Number one, going back, Panuluyan. Number two, Sinakulo. Number three, Salubong. Number four, uh, Moriones. The Pugutan or Beheading Climaxes, the Moriones Festival. The headless body is then taken in procession around the town by his fellow Moriones and then buried. Okay. Tibag or Santa Cruzan. Okay. So this is also very familiar to us uh, because we do this. Uh, in many churches, uh, every month of May. The Santa Cruzan is performed during the month of May, which have the devotion to the Holy Cross. The story, the, the, the tibag, no? The celebration depicts, meaning it shows, it describes, Saint Elena's search for the cross on which Christ died. Yan. Yun ang kwento ng tibag. Inahanap daw ni Saint Elena yung cross on which Christ died. Yung cross na pinagpakuan ni Cristo, inahanap ni Saint Elena. That's, that's the uh, background of the story. <clears throat> the Tagalog name Tibag comes from the act of excavating or leveling the mounds. Kaya tinawag na Tibag uh, in the end mayroong gagawing paghukay, no? excavating or leveling the mounds. This involves digging, breaking of stones or rocks. Mas siguro hindi yung masyadong malalaki kasi mapapagod yung mga participants. Basta the point here is to demonstrate uh, that the cross needs to be, to be dug or excavated. So this is very familiar to us, as already mentioned, yung mga bata, no, during, during the month of May, offers uh, flowers to the Virgin, uh, to the Virgin Mary. And then, at the end of the month, we uh, have this celebration. There's a procession usually around the town, participated in by by um, Anong tawag nila yan? Pag nag-Santa Cruzan? Uh, oh, mga, mga may Reina Reina yan eh. Uh, Reina, Reina Elena, yung mga ganon. Uh, Reina Elena. The, the lead queen. Kasi maraming mga Reina Reina yan. So, this is another example of a religious drama which also comes in the form of a religious celebration. Yeah. Then we have Ito, pagkagaling sa Mayo, we proceed to uh, the next celebration which happens in November. Pangaluluwa. Pangangaluluwa. An interesting socio-religious practice on All Saints Day, which literally means for the soul. For the soul. Um, the practice is based on the old belief that the souls in purgatory are released on the night of All Saints Day to go begging alms on earth. 
Kasi ang paniniwala ng mga tao, yung mga kaluluwa daw sa purgatorio, they are released on the night of All Saints' Day. Anong kung nito natin sineselebrate? All Saints' Day. November 1, no? November 1 or November 2? November. Kasi iba daw yung All Saints' Day, iba yung All Souls' Day. Ayan. Nalito na ako kung nasaan dyan ng All Saints' Day at saka nasaan ng All Souls' Day. Hanapin na lang natin mamaya. The practice is based on the old belief, as I was saying just a while ago, that the souls in purgatory are released on the night of All Saints' Day to go begging alms on earth. Yung mga kaluluwa daw sa purgatorio ay nire-release, pinakakawalan. <coughs> Excuse me. On the night of All Saints' Day to go begging alms on earth. Kaya meron dito mga trick or tricks. <laughs> Yung iba naman ay uh, they go around the neighborhood uh, just asking for anything. Wala nang trick or treat. Basta hingi na lang. Direct na. Hmm. Yan siguro yung mga kaluluwang palahingi talaga. <laughs> Mabubuhay pa. Uh, All Saints Day. Pangangaluluwa. I don't know if you have already done that, no? Iikot kayo sa neighborhood at hihingi ng kung ano, no? Ah, uh, okay. So, that ends our discussion regarding the religious drama. Religious drama. <clears throat> so, balikan lang natin, no? Under religious drama, we have the following. Panuluyan, Sinakulo, Salubong, Moriones, Tibag, Pangangaluluwa. Those are the different kinds of religious dramas. Remember, we're talking about literature during the time of the Spaniards. So, yung religious, yung religious drama falls under drama. Yun ang drama ay kasama ng poetry, prose, at saka yun nga, drama. So, tatlo sila. Major types. May, uh, major kinds. Under religious drama, yung mga nabanggit natin yung anim. So, still under uh, drama, we have this. Secular dramas. What's the difference between religious dramas and secular dramas? Ano itong mga, bakit may religious dramas? Drama din itong secular dramas. What are they? Religious dramas, as implied by the name, are all about religion. They revolve around uh, religious topics. They revolve around religious uh, celebrations the uh, the characters in those stories were religious uh, in origin galing sa bible galing sa kwento na pang religion religious dramas secular dramas on the other hand are dramas that are written for or performed during non-religious celebrations or events. Yung hindi pang relihiyong celebrations or mga mga events. Ang ordinary, ordinary yung mga, mga events, yung hindi pang religion. Ah, uh, Usually, these uh, secular dramas were held during the nine nights of vigil. Karamihan sa mga ito, if not all, are held during the night 
during the nine nights of vigil lamai and prayers after someone's death or the first death anniversary when the family members put away their mourning clothes okay so karniwan or kar usually these secular dramas were held during lamai pag merong namamatay nine nine nights siyam na gabi na may lamay so that uh, the people will not get bored during the lamay which usually lasts into early morning they entertain themselves through these secular dramas usually ito ay ginagawa din sa mga death anniversaries usually the first one pagtapos na yung pagmo-mourn pagtapos na yung pagluluksa yan so mayroong mga secular dramas dakaragatan let's talk about this ito ang una dakaragatan or literally open sea this comes from the legendary practice of testing the metal of young men vying for a maiden's hand the maiden's ring would be dropped into the sea and whoever retrieves it would have the girl's hand in marriage okay um ano ito literal silang pupunta sa dagat at maglulundagan doon no this is a uh, uh, this is a verbal conte uh, contest this is a verbal contest between Uh, two groups between two individuals ah uh, bakit may contest ayun nga ang sinabi dito this comes from the legendary practice this uh, this came from our from our tradition from one of our mm, mm, practices where the the metal the courage the bravery the sincerity the worth of an individual no, no, of a young man courting a courting a maiden is tested yeah halimbawa uh, ubod ka ng ganda at sandamakmak ang nanliligaw sa iyo you do not get to choose which one would be your husband ang gagawin ng tribo ang gagawin ng community they will all go to the sea and drop into it a ring your suitors will all dive into the sea and whoever retrieves it whoever gets the ring and gives it to the girl first will marry the girl he gets the girl's hand in marriage So malas ka na lang kapag ang nakakuha ng singsing ay yung hindi mo gusto. Hmm. Siyang nanalo eh. So he becomes your husband and you become his wife. Meron ka ugalian ng mga Pilipino na ganun ang pagpili ng mapapangasawa noon. Itong karagatan, di ba sabi nga nasa lamay, uh, ito ay contest. Then, um, pero wala maglulundagan <laughs> sa dagat. Verbal contest niya. Alimbawa, uh, this might come in the form of a riddle. Mayroong isang magbibigay ng bugtong. Whoever answers the riddle first uh, is given a reward. No? He, gets the, he gets the reward. Kung baga nga ay, yung bugtong, yung singsing na itinapon sa dagat noon. Yung nakasagot ng bugtong, whoever answers the riddle, yung parang siya ang nakakuha ng sing-sing. Yan. Pero ito ay verbal um, verbal contest. Nobody would dive into the sea here. Para bang yung modern equivalent nito ay yung uh, pagandahan ng hugot. No? Pagandahan ng hugot. Sa alamay, alimbawa, 10 or 15 people are playing this. Uh, pagandahan ng hugot. 
yung pinakamagandang hugot, yung pinakaswak na swak doon sa tema, ah, siya ang mananalo. So, kumbaga, siya ang magiging asawa ng babae. Kung ang premyo, kunyari, ay ah, babae na mapapangasawa niya or uh, something else. Uh, kung, kung basta kung ano yung premyo, nakukuha niya kasi siya ang panalo. Karagatan. Another one is, remember, we are talking about the secular dramas. Drama pa rin, pero secular na in nature. The first one is karagatan. The second one is duklo, which is the forerunner of the balagtasan. Uh, siya ang pinagmulan ng balagtasan. Here, the performers consist of two themes. Dalawang grupo. One is composed of young women called dupleras or bilyakas na mandat mga pangayana. And the other group is composed of young men called dupleros or bilyakos. An elderly man, the hari or punong halaman. Siya ang king plantito <laughs> presides over the proceedings. Yan. So, ayun nga, para siyang balagtasan. Siya ang forerunner ng balagtasan. Eh. You will notice from the structure that it's really a balagtasan. May mga bilyakas, group of uh, young women who defend one side of the argument one side of the topic and add another group composed of young men who defends the other side. Uh, an elderly man is there to preside over the proceedings and maybe even to declare later who won in the duplo. So you will notice that this, this is what we do during Balagtasan. Huh? Mayroong lakambini, mayroong lakandiwa, mayroong lakandula. So, this can be done by individual persons, pwede rin nating i-group. Uh, so, duplo ang pinagmulan yan, the forerunner of the balagtasan. So, ganon. Uh, this, is, this is another... Contest, uh, contest of battle of wits uh, among men and women, and uh, usually this is done in uh, in or this this is usually done during vigils. Karamihan ginagawa nito sa mga lamay din, uh, or siguro hindi lang lamay, no? especially alam ba? Basta mayroon silang mga special celebrations, special occasions. Siguro hindi lang sa lamay ito. Bakit sa lamay lang ba uh, nagsiselebrate ng mga tao? So that's the second one. The first is karagatan, then duplo. Para lang siyang balagtasan, no? Komedia. Ay, di paguya pa kaya. Komedia. One of the earliest forms of stage drama which usually had for its main theme courtly love, usually between a prince and a princess of different religions, one a Christian, the other a Muslim. These conflicts were resolved in the end with the victory of the Christians, again, a propaganda tool which was endorsed by the friars. Gustong gusto ng mga prile yung komedia. Kasi dito, usually ang nananalo ay yung mga kristyano laban sa mga muslim. Hmm. Ang tibayra. Okay. So, as already mentioned, the comedia is uh, one of the comedia is the earliest form of stage drama. From the term itself, comedia, this is uh, usually a story with a, with a happy ending. Masaya ang kanyang ending. Masaya yung, 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 yung story, yung drama. Usually with the winning of Christians against the or over the uh, Muslims. Kaya gustong gusto sila ng mga tao. 
Usually this is a story between a prince, kunyari yung prince ay isang kristyano, and a princess, isang prinsesa, na isa namang muslim. Hmm. Siguro, usually ang kwento nito ay magdidigmaan yung dalawang pangkat. At syempre, uh, ang mananalo ulit ay mga kristyano. Kasi ang nagkukwento ay kristyano. Pag uh, ang nagkwento nito ay muslim, sila naman ang panalo. Sabi nga natin kanina, whoever tells the story is the winner. Yeah. So, komedya. Ito ang hindi lang panglamay, no? Uh, this can also be done or performed uh, in, uh, in other occasions, in other, in other celebrations. Hindi lang sa vigil. Yan, komedya. So, very common ito kahit ngayon. Uh, maraming mga comedy-comedy na palabas. Oh, style ni Dolphy. Yan. Um, we are going to end our discussion there. We have, uh, we have covered the first part of our module. I will make another lecture video for the remaining part of the, of the module. Medyo mahaba-haba pang usapan ito, kaya we will cut it here. And I will, as already mentioned, I will uh, prepare or make another lecture video to cover the remaining topics which will include the different types of contemporary literary forms. Please read these topics in advance. Anyway, I have already provided you copies of this module. Kindly uh, read and study them in advance, if possible, no? Uh, also, please find additional information in the web, in the internet, regarding the uh, different topics. It will be to your advantage if you augment our discussions with your own readings, with your own research. No? Kasi very limited itong na-impart sa atin, sa ating module, sa ating discussion. This is, this is very limited. So, kayo na lang magdagdag through your own research. Most, if not all, of these topics can be found in the internet. Basa-basa lang kayo. And uh, as already mentioned, augment uh, what, you, what you learn from the module and uh, from from our from our discussions so diyan na lang muna magtatapos at uh, hanggang sa susunod na kabanata <laughs> Aban abangan ang susunod na kabanata uh, so goodbye everybody see you again next time